Okay. All right. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. Please, if you can hear me, can I hear you say yes? I can hear you, Caesar. Oh, we can I see you drop a message? No, he say not say because I know I can't hear you guys. So if you can hear me, can you can you please drop a message and say yes? I can hear you, Caesar. Aha, uh -huh, beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna bring our speaker up now, but I need to read his profile. All right, and I hope you guys are fully ready for what we're doing today. All right. Okay, beautiful. So you can hear me. All right. So um, I need to call. I need to send him a message. I'm so sorry for starting the live meeting late. Um, I'm having some, I'm not really used to setting up for a live stream like that. All right. So I mistakenly connect my camera twice and I was experiencing some lag in here. So that's the reason why I had to end the first meeting. Um, he's joining. Okay, so while we're waiting for him, I'm going to just quickly read his profile. All right. Um, okay, you know what? Let's do it this way. All right. I'm still waiting for his response. Okay. And um, once he gives me the signal that he's live with us, I'm going to read his profile and we are going to start the meeting. Okay. Okay, I need to turn on this light. All right. Yeah. Okay, let me just give it. Let's let me just quickly give him a call. I think that will help. Okay. All right. So um what is good everyone uh you already know my name my name is Ekeade Adetunji and I'm the founder of Caesar Graphics Academy um welcome 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 to uh my yearly meeting for creatives all right so before I introduce our speaker for today I want to quickly let you guys know what actually inspired this uh, live meeting for those of you that don't know okay so um i'm a type of uh designer that went through a lot before i got to um where i am today and thank god for grace all right i you know I, there are so many things that I, that I went through that i didn't even know that i can be free from those things and i didn't know that when i was going through those things all right god was actually setting me up for where i am now and i know so many creatives out there are going through the same thing and you're thinking oh why is my life like this why is things not going the way i want it why is it that i'm finding it difficult to become a successful creative person and um, so i decided all right to start this meeting so i can share how i was able to uh win those challenges and I believe that our speaker today is also going to share his is uh, um is one of the, the some of his challenges and how he was able to overcome those challenges. But before I I introduce him, I want to quickly let you guys know that you are not where you are right now by mistake. All right, you are actually where you are now because uh sorry I'm a, I'm going to sound a little bit like a pastor. I'm a pastor, okay. So you're not where you are now by mistake. You're actually there for a reason. All right. So uh, that reason is not something that um, um, uh, lazy people, okay, always get. It's something that if you really want to achieve why you are there, you have to be hardworking. All right. 
you have to be hardworking. You have to be strong whenever things are not, when you're seeing things that you don't want to see. Because one of the things I, I, I know that successful people normally go through is they always go through challenges that always make them want to stop pushing. All right. And I want to let you guys know that you are not where you are now by mistake. You are there for a purpose. So that purpose why you are there is what should be your focus. I know so many of us want to see ourselves becoming a successful designer. All right. But before you can become a successful designer and a successful freelance person, there are some price you have to pay, which you are already paying the price now, but it looks as if you are wasting your time. So I want to quickly let you know that you are not wasting your time. I'm sure that by the time uh, our speaker is done telling us how he was able to overcome all the challenges that he went through, I'm sure he's going to bless you because there's this, uh, 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 is the CEO of Fuga, and you know I've, I've visited the Fuga website and I noticed that the concept, the the concept, all right, the idea behind the full gap is not something that ordinary person can come up with, and I can see that is so much into um, helping creatives, helping people, all right, which is what is where his company is about. So I'm going to put it. I'm going to quickly um, read his profile now, and when I'm done reading his profile, I'm going to ask him to turn on his his uh, um, camera so you guys can see him. Some of you already know him because I was shocked when I post the publicity artwork for this meeting on the platform and the way some of you were like, wow, Victor is coming for, Victor is one of the, uh, Victor is one speaking at the designer, the designer's adventure. So, um, I'm sure it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a great time with him. So I'm going to quickly read his profile now. So Victor is an identity and brand advocate who is leading two teams of ambitious people at Fort Canvas and Full Gap to build the future. Since 2015, Victor has led the team at Fort Canvas, an assembly of Africa's finest brand strategy and design minds, powered by insights from this experience. He co-founded Full Gap a tech startup building an operating system for freelancers and anyone getting work done. He is constantly rediscovering and leaving out his own voice while helping other people and businesses, especially the underdogs, the underdogs find theirs. So right now I'm going to ask Victor to please turn on his camera so we can see his um, handsome face, and uh, it's good to. Uh, how you doing, Victor? <laughs> We're happy to have you. I hope. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope everyone can hear Victor. Please, if you can hear Victor, I appreciate it if you can just drop a message and say yes, we can hear him, please, because I can hear him loud, loud and clear here. So if you can hear me, hear him, please kindly say yes, we can hear Victor. Anybody? Um. Oh, beautiful. They can hear you, Victor. So the floor is open for you. So tell us who you are and teach us how we can overcome challenges as creatives. Thank you first for the introduction. Thank you for doing this in the first place. Thank you for your journey over the years and for the impact you have given in the community. Thank you for not only overcoming the struggles that you have experienced, but caring about how other people can. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, Mr. And I'm happy to be here. My name is Victor Fatomi. He has already read my profile. Uh, but just to add that I started designing in 20... I started designing in 2011. Uh, I was always an artistic kid. Most kids were artistic, right? But I was lucky to keep mine. And when I started having opinions on my brother's magazines and the designs they did for him in those days, he would pay designers. And when they brought the design, I would be looking at it, I would have opinions. Then he would say, Ah, it's like you have some good opinions on this thing. Maybe you should go and learn it. Right? Uh, that was the start for me. Then I started playing with the software, and that was the start for me. I am happy to speak with. Many of you are watching, whether you're just starting out 
or depending on the different levels of your career, I'm happy to share. I mean, uh, as, as Mr. Tujik asks the questions, uh, I look forward to touch on different parts of my story too for you. When I think about my journey, it goes back to conversations like this, people sharing their experiences, which can sometimes lift your spirit or inspire you or answer some questions. So I'm super happy to be here and I will yeah, look forward to as much as possible that I can share. Please, I mean, share with your friends, invite your friends to join this conversation. Yeah. So Victor, yeah, Victor Tommy, uh, or Far for short. <laughs> Hello, Victor. Sorry, I didn't get that. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I was done with. I was just introducing myself. Yes. Oh, I would okay. say I would take. I would love to, you know, use your questions from you and, you know. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. Actually, I told you we we're going to tell us about how, how you started and. Okay. You want me to? Oh, cool. Sure. Okay. Okay. I, okay. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um. Yeah. I always enjoy telling my story. So. Um, as a kid, right, I said earlier that I was an artistic kid, and this came to life in different ways. First thing was I discovered very early enough that I was not one of the most talented with football, so I would hardly get selected on the streets or in school. I loved the game. I loved the idea of uh, something that brought us together, and I was energetic. And so, while I wasn't the best footballer, I was interested in the game and what could I do, what role could I play if I wasn't like the best goal scorer. So at around age, you know, seven, six, I would, I remember organizing my first tournament around that age, I organized a small tournament, nothing serious, you know, but, you know, okay, you, uh, Ojo, you form this team, you form this team, we play semi-final and we play Fine. I'd watched um, Korea, Japan. You no, know, of course, you know, you follow Super Eagles and all of that. And I remember the first significant thing I can call art that I made was the trophy for the first tournament I created. And what did I do? I carried an empty base bottle, and then I, which for my dad's library. And then I picked wrappers, these shiny wrappers from my mom's wardrobes. And then I used the silver back of those wrappers and then wrapped it around an empty Billy's bottle. And you know, the Billy's bottle has this way, there's this shape to it, such that by the time I was done, it looked like a trophy. And the tournament I organized on the road, you know, not to say it was not a football tournament, just, you know, where kids can create a football pitch out of anywhere. And then I brought this thing, right, I brought it out as the trophy. I can remember making a schedule of how the matches will play, and I pasted it on the wall. It remained on that wall for several years. Even when I already was an adult, I still saw traces of the paper on our wall, because we were playing the football somewhere at the back of our compound. Um, and to bring it out, and suddenly the kids really, everybody wanted to win it, were not many. But I had made something out of nothing. And when I think about myself as an artistic kid, it dates back to the tiny things like that. I always had a thing for organizing, which, to be honest, the depth of design is mental. It's psychological. The tools, the Photoshop and the AI and all of these things, very important. But the, for the best designers, the tools help to express a way of thinking. And I think that somehow I add traits in that direction. Um, thanks to both nature and nurture. Then I recall that when I would go on, the second most significant thing I could do as a kid um, was cutting out the pictures of super good footballers. Uh, like uh, JJ Okocha, Wilson Oluma, and I would I would cut them out. Then get, I got this 40 leaves exercise book, and then page to page I pasted them on different pages, and that was the first magazine I created. I call it a magazine because that's really what it looked like when I was done. 
I remember selling it to my, no, selling it to my classmate for 20 naira. Um, and then, so I continued like that. But every time when you ask me, what do you want to become when you grow up? I could say pharmacist today. I remember I said pharmacist at some point. I don't know why. There at another point I said uh, an architect. At another point I said a football referee. At another point I said I wanted to be a sailor. And if you notice everything I just said now, there's nothing connected them. It was almost as though <laughs> it's almost as though when you ask me, I just said what was on my mind in that time. If, if a football match was on the TV screen, I would say football ref. And but I never said graphic designer. Mm. I never said anything like this because I didn't know it existed. And I think that's the first thing. Exposure is very important for our ability to dream. Um, by the time we started Fort Cavas as an agency, we could dream about creating an agency because we saw agencies in Lagos, we saw agencies abroad, and we found these things on the internet. Facebook was very important to find some of these pages. And then there was the Nigeria Graphic Designers group back then. Mm. And at some point, I saw Caesar Graphics page as well. And just seeing those things, seeing people doing something, made it easier to dream about doing them. So for the most years of all my teenage years, I didn't say graphic design, but I didn't, I didn't know it existed. But when I got to uni, on that level, my brother was in the final year and I lived with him, and he ran a magazine. And he paid people, they would come to his house and show him open oral draw, and be showing him cover design illustrations. And I saw that he paid them. And when they're reviewing, I would say something like, ah, this, this uh, text, this picture, can we make it bigger? And it seemed like my suggestions made sense. And to some extent. So my brother was like, ah, he's like, you have something for this thing. And then that's when I started thinking as well, ah, wait, this is not getting paid now. Like, my brother thinks I'm good at it. I should try it out. So I asked them to teach me. They asked me to pay maybe 10000 right then. Um, that was probably how much I was getting from home. Uh, I couldn't afford it, so otherwise I wouldn't eat. But they were, I, I was privileged to have a laptop. My mom got me a laptop even when I didn't yet need it. So it was just there, watching movies and all of that. My brother's laptop was bad, so they installed Corel Draw on my laptop so that they could open it on my, open their designs on my laptop and edit it live with my brother so they could have the source files. So when the old magazine project was done, the, the software was still left on my computer. Mm. So I started to play on it. And which is the first thing I tell people that if you open any software, there's nothing you press that you make your computer burn. Yeah. Like you can't, you know, you can literally open any software and just start pressing things. Like it can't go wrong. You can't really go wrong. And oftentimes when you over on any tool, there's text to tell you, okay, this is big tool, this is square tool. So I started to just play around with it. And that was the start for me. I never paid those guys to teach me. Um, it would have been good if they taught me as well. Everything has its own pros and cons, but I just couldn't afford it. Mm. So I started playing around with it. I started trying to recreate things. Um, mm. Then I created a flyer for my brother. Mm. Very ugly thing when you think about it from this right now. Then I made logos for my friends, logo for the department, mm. logo for the hostel. Mm. They all did not look good. When I look back now, they were all shooting mm. designs. <laughs> but that was the start. And I just grew gradually from there. I struggled, like many of us, with the business and structure side of things. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but it was a mess. Even when I started to get good, I wouldn't meet deadlines. But then I met Bolaje who then became my partner in my design business. Mm -hmm. So Balaji was the guy that was supposed to go become a soldier, but he didn't get into the military. But he mm -hmm. meant that he was that structured guy. So he would wake me up and say, we have a delivery by 10 a.m., do this thing now. Why are you they sleep? And that kind of stuff. So I started to get more structured. And so, so things just picked up gradually from there. And then we started an agency. It was called VGC Media. In 2015, we wanted to do things more seriously. And we set the goal for 2025. In 2015, we said we wanted to be a global design agency by 2025. It's two years, two years to mm. go now. We're still far, yeah, cool. but we're, I mean, we're, we're, yeah. like, we're like top agency in Nigeria already, known wow. across Africa, and beat, we're getting global gradually. But wow. we had a goal, clear, right? And we signed four covers. So everything just goes on and on and on from there. But hopefully, from the questions, I guess I'll be able to double down on some other parts. Wow. But that's like a beautiful. Of, of I that. like that. I like that. All right. So, guys, if you have questions that you want to ask, please just um, throw all questions to Victor. 
But I, I have some, uh, um, you know, questions I would like Victor to help us with here because it's part of the things okay. that, you know, I, I experienced when I was growing and uh, I, want to, I want to know if I actually did the right thing, all right, when I was going through those things. And uh, the first question is, um, what are those the challenges you face that made you want to stop your dream? Like when you wanted to start the, your brand agency, what are those things, those challenges that you, you, you know, you face that make you feel okay? Ah, should I stop or should I just continue? Because I remember when I, when I, when I wanted, when I was into design, you know, I have uh, in my family, I'm the only person that didn't go to the, to the university. So back then, I was thinking, if I did not go to <laughs> If I did go to the university, yes. all right, if I did go to the university, I can't buy myself a car and getting married is going to be difficult. You know, my mindset then was, okay, it's only the people that make money are the ones who are, who are, who have the university certificate. So it was a very huge challenge then, you know, you made me start thinking, okay, should I just forget about design and focus on, you know, going back to school. So, but I want to know what are those things that, like, what are those challenges? that you so that made you feel okay should i just stop because really some people think there's no future in design so let me know what are those things that made you feel like you know not pushing so but please victor so, before you answer the question sorry please if you have questions you want to ask victor kindly drop it in the comment section all right i i'm going to read your question out and then ask um victor to help us with the answer okay victor please the floor is open for you okay mm. Okay, great. Um, okay. So, earlier on, there were times when, because in the early stages, you're trying to crack um, how do you consistently get clients. Mm. Now, but it was worse that even the clients that we got, there was a struggle to get those projects done. So I had like, okay, one project that starts that's supposed to be done in two months or one month, and then it drags for months, and then you're frustrated on those projects, but your project fee is the same thing. It's not, you're not on salary. It's the same project fee, right? But you are frustrated, either both your fault and the client's fault, everything is messy, the revisions are not ending, the scope is expanding, and you are then wishing, okay, maybe a new client will bring new funds, new energy, but they are still struggling to get the new clients. Now you want to get the work done. You also want to find clients at the same time. So there were times when I'm like, sure, I'm not going like just get a job doing something that has stability like this. Which, to be honest, it's it's it doesn't mean it would have been a wrong decision. Uh, in fact, this on an individual level, the route eventually staying true meant I was able to have impact on more people because when you look at all the different people who people have employed and trained through Fort Canvas, but on an individual level, I could have gone to get a job, reduce stress for myself, mm. and I would have been fine on an individual level. Which, for anyone even making that decision, is not a wrong decision. But on my own particular journey, it was that for me. It was the struggle to get projects finished on time, efficiently. Mm. It was the struggle to find new clients. So you're thinking about getting ongoing clients done. You're also mm. thinking about getting new clients because mm. the money that the ongoing mm. clients paid is stretching. Views are not stopping and still mm. want the same money. So, mm. you're, so it's, it's, just, it's confusing. Mm. You want to be a creative person, but it's the business and sales side pulling you as well. So mm. those moments were frustrating. And, you know, the moments were like, it's like, we'll just stop this whole thing and go and sit down your own job. Mm. So that would be it for me. But, but somehow, somehow I put through. Somehow I put through. Yeah. Mm. All right, beautiful. Thank you, Victor, for that. All right, so we have a question from one of the people who are watching us. His name is um, Ake Loyo Fatai. Please, if I did not pronounce your name correctly, pardon me, all right? So Fatai's question is, how do you expand your brand? Victor, how did you expand your brand? Hmm. Okay, that's a question. That's a very, very big question but the few points i can drop on that is what is a brand in the first place okay. that brand right it's the sum total of people's perception about you 
right? And that people, increasingly, there are two things that need to grow for us to say you're building a brand. The positive reputation we have of you is growing. But when I say we, that we have of you, the number of us holding that opinion in our minds also needs to grow. You get what I mean? So five people think that you are a great guy, around 50% of a great guy. You need to be moving that 50% up so that they think, oh, this guy is 90% a great guy. That's one thing that needs to grow. Number two is that five of them are holding their opinions in the first place. You need that five to become 10, to mm -hmm. become 20. So it's like more people are aware of you, mm -hmm. but not just aware of you. They hold, the opinion they hold of you is also steadily growing. So it's like expanded reach, but also uh, growing reputation. It's two things. So I need to break that down first before I answer that question. Okay. So the things that would help to, to achieve this thing I just broke down now would be one, you are doing good work. Good work is relative, so, right? So. But you're doing the best you can do per time. Mm. How can you do the best you can do per time? One, you are interested in the good of the client. Yeah. You don't do their work at the 11th hour. You don't do mm. it with, ah, this client does not even pay me well, sir. Mm. This client, sir, mm. I don't get this thing done. No, your <laughs> heart is in it. <laughs> your mind is there, number one. Two, you get feedback. You try mm. to listen to them. Mm. You really, really listen to them. You, mm. you are humble enough to ask for opinions from your peers or from your mentors. You know, how can I improve this? Thing? You leave your ego at home and you focus on how can I do the best work on this project? Meaning the result of that project should be better than your quality. It should be a bit of your quality as well as feedback, as well as the client's feedback. A lot of times we also think clients don't know anything about design. That's not true. Their opinion matters. Mm. It is your job to interpret their opinion, but their opinion matters. Yeah. Number two is that you deliver the job efficiently. You communicate well. Mm. The truth is that sometimes if you promise the client three weeks, the truth is that sometimes if I try your best, eh, it's one day to go and you are not done. Or two days to go, you are not done. It happens. But you have to communicate ahead. Mm. Your brand starts to go down when it is your client that calls you three days after your supposed delivery time. And you're like, ah, ma, I'm so sorry. Oh, I was even going to call you. Or oh, worst case, you didn't even pick up. Mm. You don't even pick up because you're under pressure. You could have saved that pressure two days to time by saying, hello, ma, hello, sir. I have, I'm doing my best, but to be honest, this timeline is looking difficult now. I would like mm. to ask for one week extension. Mm. And that one week extension, you must meet it. If you have mm. to extend more than once, that brand is going down. But if you ask mm. for an extension once and you meet it, your brand is intact and they feel like you are a responsible person. Oh, but best case scenario, if you can in fact deliver when promised or even a day earlier, your brand is growing. So mm. your brand, eh? Many of us think about that brand as I want to be known in Lagos, I want to be known by in Abuja, everybody. Mm -mm. Chill. Your brand starts with that client, either it's on your street or in your church or your uncle, the small work you currently have is where your brand reputation begins from. Mm. Now, if you are putting in your efforts and you are, you are fighting hard, you are watching videos, you are doing researches, you are sketching many options, it's not last minute, I just come up with something. If you are putting in those work, now you want to be telling your story on the side. So imagine that you are putting in efforts, right? Mm. I know that this is a struggle for many people. But it's my proposal to you because I'm the one just answering your question, right? As you are putting in real hard work, my advice to you is that whether it's Twitter or WhatsApp status or IG story, you are telling your story small, small. Something like this, this, this sketch is, I've done like 13 sketches today. Like this work is really, is really testing me, right? Or you even do sketches that don't show the name of the clients or you post some of those sketches, right? Or you take screenshots from an article that you have really read today while trying to do that work well. Once in a while you share it. Or you take a picture of a book, right? You are carrying people along. Every People who know you know that this guy is working on something at the moment. Then when that work is done and the client has approved it, you also share from that work. It doesn't have to be as detailed as a fourth canvas case study. Even if it's just a simple post, you know, the client has launched or something, you're like, oh, I had a great time for the past three months. 
working with these clients with this project i did this and did that can be short the idea is that building your brand eh, do good work yeah. deliver efficiently let the world know carry the world along but those first two things i said must happen if you are telling your story but you're not doing good work one your story would it would be empty in that sense, it will, you will know that there's no substance to this thing, and you are only deceiving yourself. Mm. So do good work, deliver mm. efficiently, then be carrying us along. Yeah, you might not be the Twitter type or not the social media type. Just try. Even if it's once a week, Saturday evening, come. Do a quick journal publicly of what you have been up to this week. But that story will only be strong if you have indeed been up to real work. You have indeed been work to practice and learning. Now, some of you are afraid. What if they bash me? What if the work is not good enough? No, don't talk online as if you are an expert, if you are not yet an expert. Talk like you are sharing work in progress. There's a difference between, oh, I just did this, this badass work, and, oh, I, I was working on these sketches, and, um, you know, I, I'm, this is still ongoing. I'm still not sure if this is good enough, but this is like work in progress from this thing I'm doing. Right? You, can, you can have a tone of humility. You're just sharing your journey. You're not trying to talk like an expert. So a combination of these things done consistently over time is how you build your brand. You are serving the one client you have well. And you are carrying the public, the rest of us, along. If you keep doing these things consistently, you will build your brand. Your client will yeah. speak well of you. Yeah. Some of us who are watching, like, okay, this guy is on to something. So yeah. the work starts first. You're telling your story and you're satisfying your clients. You're doing good work. Yeah, yeah. that that will culminate co culminate over time to building your brand. Oh, lastly, one more thing: um, your relationship. You're a good person. Mm. You're a good person. Like you're a well-being person. You are kind. You you. If somebody else is doing good work, it doesn't take anything away from you that you're commenting and you're supporting them because yeah. they're doing work. Or somebody tried, or you want to correct them. You are constructive and supportive in your comments. Just be a good person. Be a kind person. Be a friendly person. Right? So out of this thing together and opportunities will come your way. Your brand will grow. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much, Victor. I love that. But I have a question I want to ask because, you know, designers, whenever they hear this, uh, um, how to grow your brand, how to get clients, because I can see Galaxy's question is asking the same question that how can one... Uh, uh you know get clients and your response to the question now it has covered that area but there, i think there's something creative uh, miss which is they feel okay when i hear this when i heard i'm supposed to do good to clients i'm supposed to uh, uh uh give value all right give great value to my client because what you mentioned here is more is fo is focused on make sure you you focus on um adding value to uh, um, what you do, all right? So, but I want you to please tell us, is this getting of clients or uh, growing your brand something that happened immediately you show love to one client or two? Is this something that happened immediately? No, it, 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 it grows over time. Thank it you. grows over time. Okay. It grows over time. Beautiful. Yes, Beautiful. sometimes yes. But sorry, just to say, mm. again, your brand, so here's the thing, right? It's always growing. There's really no finish line. If you do this thing for one, two, three clients over the period of six months, your brand has already grown in its own way. You know, you are being held in high esteem by your clients, your clients' partners or family, your clients' friends, the few people on your WhatsApp, the few people following you online, right? By the time you think of 12 months, that number has grown again. So it's a continuous journey. You know, it, it adds up. There's the need for patience. Yeah. yeah. There's the need for patience building up again. on each other. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So, but one, one, one more thing again, uh, 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 Victor. Um, you know, I, I, you know, you've mentioned that we should be good with the, we should be good to the, the people we are working with for at the moment like which should be nice to them you should make sure that every project we, we do for them should be excellent all right uh yeah yes. i know that's for the people we already know so how do we uh, like what what do you have to say when it comes to 
getting clients that we don't even know at all like nobody refer us to them is this is there anything like that like getting clients getting yes. uh, con uh, response or getting calls from people we don't even know that just saw our uh maybe a project somewhere and decided to say please um i would like you to do something for me i saw something you did for someone so is there any way yes. is there something one need to do to make that happen that they see what you can do so i already answered it it's the storytelling part okay it's the part where i said as you are walking mm -hmm. right you are sharing bits of your journey the things you are reading the sketches you are making the designs you are working on while keeping confidentiality as much as possible right okay if you make a daily habit of sharing your journey this will share, sorry please at the how moment do i now, share my journey how 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 is there any way i can share my journey for people to or how do i share my journey let me just put it down how do i okay share? let me let me break it down specifically okay mm. let me let me be very specific mm. um 7 pm let's say i'm a designer okay. and i'm designing i'm in akure okay. maybe if you talk to them i'm working on something hmm? right now what i mean by sharing your story i'll give the next i'll give this is what i'm going to do to be, to be as practical as possible i will tell you specifically an example of what i will do for the next five days okay to fulfill what i'm saying okay this evening i'll bring out my sketchbook okay that's where i've been sketching some options on this project i'm working on first like i said good work comes first i've put enough effort that sketch i've done my best on it mm -hmm. i will take a picture of that sketchbook and i will do a tweet that i can repeat on my whatsapp oh, wow. status uh -huh. and i will say what i want to hear I'm, <laughs> yeah, right yeah and i will say um i've been working i've spent the past five days trying to crack this logo design project okay it keeps evolving but i i, I look forward to where this will get me something like that right yeah. you tweet it tomorrow morning i'll take a picture of my um a book a design book that i have either physical copy or there's a pdf on my laptop i'll carry my camera i'll take a picture of it right and let's say i want to put in the evenings because i want to be focused let's say twitter distracts me and i'm like ah, i do i want to focus you know okay let's say i always do evenings tomorrow evening i'll take a picture of a current design book i'm reading but again that means i am reading a design book so the, the thing about storytelling is you have to be first of all story worthy because you don't this is not a call for fake life no don't lie on these things your life first should be story worthy if you're doing well as a designer it means part time you are learning something mm. right and you're working mm. out on something mm. now to go back to the first thing i said i would do today if somebody might say but oh, victor i don't have any project on this at the moment create a project for yourself pick a company and you want to rebrand it by yourself they don't have to approve it in fact they likely will not approve it i've done up to five ten i've rebranded efcc tennis bank community university those I things like they this. never approve them <laughs> And it's not about, I know you can relate, that's why you're laughing, <laughs> right? I'm sure you've said this is over and over again. <laughs> but the thing is, those projects is not for them to approve. They like yeah. it because companies yeah. change their logo by, the companies decide in a body that they want to change their logo and they reach out to a top agency or designer. That's how companies change their logo. I once had the proposal approved, Cha, but it was, it's a local business in Accra. Okay. But with the big companies, probably not. So yeah. whether with a local business that you respect, who you have access to, actually, if you want to approve, your chances mm. are higher with that one. Mm. One egg that you know. I don't want to say laundry down the road and that you greet the uncle, they greet you, you know, and the account looks like a serious egg you mm. can use their projects to practice. Take mm. it to them. They might give you mm. 20 days or 10 days. Yeah. It's not the reward. <laughs> yeah, and they might not even pay you. They might just part you, but see, you go and erect the signage and you'll be proud. You wow. take a picture of the signage again and go online and say, I was, I'm happy to see my work move from the sketch pad to being on the street. Now, day one, I post my sketchbook. Day two, I post a picture of the book I'm reading, the design book or something on my laptop. Day three, I zoom into the graphic design I'm doing on my screen in a way I don't show the client's name, mm. right? I zoom into a part of the art board. I take a screenshot of my screen showing the whole CorelDRAW AI environment. Yeah. I post it and say, 
what you guys saw on sketch about today is yes uh, two days ago is gradually growing yeah. day four i post a screenshot of me listening to a podcast or me being on a call like this i take a screenshot of it or oh, had a session with caesar graphics and um and victor Fatomi today and i learned a couple of things then i add the two or three things that i learned which again if you are doing the right things a week there should be a talk that you're listening to and it may not be a talk like this it might be a podcast right day five i post a screenshot of my favorite boner boy or the video song that i'm listening to and something like oh sometimes music helps the creative juice to flow I guys i've given you guys five days right five days of examples of storytelling if you daily identify and you see that i mix it up some of them were more serious than the others. Some were like lifestyle, like music. Why some is like actual sketch? Why some is like learning? If I do this consistently, you know what will happen? To answer your question, right? You know, you're asking a question about completely new clients. Yeah. This is what will happen. Let's say I have 40 followers, 40 mm -hmm. or 30 followers or 20. Because I have a habit of sharing these things, at the beginning, one person will retweet it or one person or, or zero persons. By the fourth day, three people will retweet it. Do you know what retweet means? Retweet means people carry your post and they expose it to their audience. So you have 40 followers. But if me, for example, I retweet your post, that means my followers see your post. Yeah. Right? But let's say I'm not following you and I can't see your post. But there's somebody following you that has another 50 followers, different from the 30 followers that you have. Every time they click retweet on your post, that's 50 new people seeing what you post. That's how it starts. You are sharing. If you make an habit of sharing, people will make a habit of supporting you when you share. True. At the beginning, you will get zero comments or zero likes. But it's like what they say, that the universe arranges. When you want to move, eh, the universe will conspire to help you. That's why you must not tell yourself all those stories of, see, narratives is what lead us. All the stories of ah, in Nigeria is hard. Ah, this career, there's no opportunity. Forget all those stories. Get to hey. work and tell your story. Hey. If you do that constantly, oh. <laughs> even though you have zero likes and zero comments for a week, don't stop. Gradually, you get noticed. Gradually, somebody will comment and say, um, "How much? How much do you? Can you DM me? I have a logo I want to design. My, my wife runs a business, and my husband has this whatever I want to design. Do you make a poster? Mm. Somebody will DM you." The first ones may not be good offers. They may yeah. not, you may literally not work with them, but you attract. So how you get new clients is by telling your story on the internet or and or well, both of it. If you are serving your clients, well, your clients to refer you to their friends. When you mm. don't ask them that, who did this work? They will say, ah, that guy, and that guy is very reliable. Remember the efficiency part that I spoke about? That guy is a reliable guy. Do you understand? So it's a mix of those things. So you, you, you completely new clients will not just disappear in your front. They need to have heard about you, which might be through a client referral, or seen your work, which is storytelling mm. on digital media. Yeah. So WhatsApp yeah. status, Twitter, Instagram, make a post, replicate it across the board, make mm. it habit. Lastly, eh, lastly, lastly, sometimes I, I, I find out after knowing someone for a long time, that they do a particular service. Maybe I've known someone for two years. Then one day I discovered a software engineer or a designer. I'm like, how do I know you? Have you on WhatsApp? You like, I know you, but I don't know that you do this thing. It doesn't make sense. It's because they work at home, but they don't make a habit of sharing from their work. So how will I remember them if I am not conscious of them? There's a story I like to share that if you call an old uncle, oftentimes, and everybody has experienced it at least one time, where you call a relative of yours, and they go like, ah, Baoni, I've been meaning to call you. Uh, it's been, a, it's been a, that open mind. there was something that I wanted to tell you about, right? If the truth is that if you didn't call them, they might not have called you. It's, called, it's consciousness. They thought about calling you, but they're also busy, so they forget. But every time you post something on social media, that's the same effect it generates for you. It makes people remember you. So one, it makes them aware. Then every other time you post, it makes them remember. That's how people remember to send your Andrew or your page 
to someone. But lastly, lastly, as you're doing all these things, when you can, add your portfolio to your bio or add something to your bio that makes it easy for people to see more of your work. And you don't need to go and build a website. You can use a tool like Mainstack or Linktree. Just link all your work there, you know. So let me stop here. But those are, those, that, that's really how it is. That's really how it is from my perspective. Good work. Tell your story of your journey. Mm. Yeah. Solid. Solid. <laughs> Solid. All right. Uh, so thank you so much, Victor. In fact, you your your response to the question we're asking is just covering the almost all the questions that people are asking. All right. But somebody's asking here that um uh, I think this is coming from uh it's coming from two Moses to say where to start from the beginning. What would you do differently? Like what would be your step by step journey? Sorry, can you come again on that? Okay, so the question is, if you were to start from the beginning, all right, what is that thing you are going to do different? Oh, okay, that's nice. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I like that question. That's a very nice question. If I were to start again, right, I will dedicate the first one year of my career to no client's work, just learning and practicing. And I don't mean learning theoretically only. I would take on my own projects. I would carry take businesses or NGOs around me, speak to their founders, say, I'm a boarding designer or brand strategy or whatever I'm starting. And um, I would like to make something for you. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some questions. And I will try and create things for them. Practicing a particular course that I am learning. Like, I'll take myself, you know how we go to school, four-year course. I will arrange for myself a one-year course, right? Arrange, okay, this course this month, that course next month. And on the side of that course, right? I will spend time, watch all of Caesar Graphics um, videos, oh. watch all of um, designers' courses that I can find on the internet around design, around branding, around strategy, different sides of the things I want to practice as a professional. Then, side by side, I will pick projects of my own, other projects of businesses that I know their founders. Actually, I won't pick, when I was doing proposals earlier in my own career, I picked big businesses like Zenith Bank, all those. No, I won't pick that actually. I'll do it again. I'll pick businesses in my in my environment or businesses who i know their founders right always easy for me to reach out to their founders not the biggest ones i will practice with those guys and now but you want to ask me where will i find food to eat because one year no clients work so because now because you're asking me now if i were to start again right because i'm already here in the future if i was to go back that means i'm aware that there's money in the future like, I can guarantee that if this is go well, there's money in front. So I'll make a compelling case to my parents or someone in my family and say, you know, just have an agreement. For fact, they were sending me money, like 15K a month. And to be honest, we managed well in those in 20, early 2011 and all. It was enough for me to feed myself, right? So I would just have stayed. But once I started making money in design, I, started, I stopped asking them to send money, send money to me. But I would have continued to collect that money. Probably negotiated for more. That see, I'm learning a new skill that's going to liberate like in Lagos this is a real career. Trust me. I'll probably even show card stories to some people and go and tell them, can you be sending me 30k instead to support me? Right? Or find another way, like find another way, maybe buying and selling, buying laptops and buying something. Just find one side of food that's not designed. Like I can add to food on my table. But with that design, I'll take myself to school for one month, for one year. No client work. I'll be finding people, leading examples in my field. I'll listen to everything they've said. I'll read every blog they've written. I'll listen to every podcast. I'll watch every video that they've made. And I'll practice. But I'll practice with projects that I chose. You know, if you go to a client and you're doing free work for them, they can't put pressure on you. They can't say, make this thing bigger. They can't say, no, you're in control. You're not paying me now. 
So when you tell me change this color to purple, I tell you, man, I'm not sure this purple can work. I will talk like an expert. Make this font bigger. I'm like, I'm, I don't think we should make it bigger. You, you, no, you can't argue. Like, it's a different frame of control, man. I took my time. I'm creating this for you. So they will even talk. It's a lot of people that will come with respect. They will say, hey, what do you, Victor, do you think? You know? So that's what I will do for the first one year. And after that first one year, I might start my storytelling. Actually, right there in that practice, in all my attempts, all those journeys of me talking to this and trying to do that and taking this course, I will be tweeting about them. I will take one hour in the evening, six to seven, when I go online, just give them just about what I'm doing, right? Meaning that for one year of, I'm not looking for clients to work with, I am I'm gathering an audience of people. In fact, some people might start already DMing me after like three months of me sharing daily. And I'm working it daily. I'm being story worthy daily. So people are start telling me, can you do this for us? I'll tell them I'm currently on a debate for client work. I will dig deep. Dig deep without pressure. That's what I'll do differently. So by the end of one year, I'll declare that I'm open for business. By that time, people have followed me for one year, seeing my journey, my practice, right? And I am good. So someone like me, for example, we got into business very fast. What kept quality for us was that we then, when we became a team, I then had designers on my team who were focusing on design. Someone like me, I got, there's still many things that I wish I knew how to do with design, for example. There are still for that depth. But finally, I really got there over time. But I switched fast from design development into business and sales and management way too fast. Do you understand? So I would have dug deeper, right? And then come out, right? And then start attracting opportunity and hopefully i would have still met Balaji as well Balaji would have faced all the business side and then i would start sharing so i would not be taking clients work and then teaching and coaching people with me which i did eventually but yeah that's what i would have done first in the beginning it would have been like no clients work do you understand i know it's difficult for most of us here like because we need money right and so it's probably not practical for you but that's what i would have done wow Thank you so, so much, Victor. I'm loving this. In fact, people are feeling you. Some people are asking for your... Don't worry, guys. I can see somebody asking for how you can protect yourself. I, in fact, I'm not saving... I'm not say, I'm, I'm going to change Victor's name of my contact for uh, FB. I'm going to save it as Victor Electoral because I'm enjoying what I'm hearing from him. Anyway, so, so, but um, I don't want us to... Because Victor is a very busy person, all right? And... Um, I don't want to stop having it today. So I'm going to take, I'm going to ask you questions. And uh, after then, uh, uh, so if I did not read your question now, please, uh, Victor already answered, uh, 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 Victor already had mentioned something to that to the question you asked. So what our advice would be is, Please, I'll make sure I make this video available on my channel so you can go back and watch it again and get what uh, uh, Victor, Victor said, all right? Because with what Victor just dropped this evening is something I believe we can go back and watch this again. All right, so Victor, all right, um, you know, I've seen so many creatives have, but it's common. I don't know if that's, it is, if that's how it is all over the world, but I know right here in Nigeria, most of the Africa, we are used to even our self brand name, even if we don't have a brand name, all right. So, and I know so many. The reason why so many designers decided to copy other designers because they feel okay. If I'm a designer, I have to I have to come out as like a brand agency, all right. So my question is: Is it compulsory for every designer to uh? To start a brand agency, do something that must be. Is it something? Is it a must for you to have a brand agency if you're a creative person? Nice. Thanks for asking. The short answer is no. Like you rightly said, um, I think this is what should happen. People who want to start brand agencies should know what they are getting into, and they should do it because they want to replicate the impact that agencies truly have. So, for example by going the agency route and not going an individual designer route. I've been able to employ probably close to 200 people in the course of our, of our business, so employment opportunities. 
I've been able to help those individuals grow. Many of them have scattered all over Europe and different parts doing fine for themselves. So Fort Canvas was like a platform for them. I have been able to, and that meant I also created a culture, right? Which also influenced people even on a personal level. I've also been able to harness the power of collaboration and learning. This has just become many things apart from making money. Now, only if you care about those things, you're like, I want to create opportunities for people. I want to harness the power of collaboration. I want to, you care about leadership and culture and the idea of business, right? The idea of business. Only if you care about those things should you start a design agency. But if you think, okay, starting a design agency will help me make more money. No, you can make as much money as you need as an individual. In fact, <laughs> it's value make you poorer at the beginning because the small, small money you start to make, you have to pay salaries. And then you have new edicts that you've not signed up for. As a designer doing something by yourself, using a, full, a tool like FUGAP, doing your invoices, doing everything, is, life is easier. And you're focusing on your craft more. If you enter agency, do it the cost you, you, you your, your chest is ready for you know what it requires to run a business and you're motivated by the impact that businesses can have only that but many of us had even even myself to be honest when i started the agency it wasn't like i was conscious of all this impact thing to be honest in those years it just seemed like it made more sense you can command more value you can make more money to be honest those were some of the initial thoughts at the beginning uh, but especially in 2023, right? Trust me, trust me. With good work, efficient delivery, storytelling, networking, being a great guy, you can command. There are individuals in this country command charging as high as Fort Canvas, like charging as high. We charge well, we charge very well, and there are individuals charging as high as we do. One man, do you understand? There are big names in the industry. You check out New York for example, right? Individuals, and there's, there's a long list of them, individual graphic designers, brand designers. So, like I said, the answer to your question is no, you don't have to. If you want to do it, do it because you, you have business to care about starting a business. But if it's that, oh, it's a business by saying we and saying our team, that's the way, no, 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 no. As an individual, if you carry yourself like an institution, which is what Fugab says, if you, you know, you, everything is structured, you don't just do, it's not just WhatsApp voice notes, you're like, oh, ma, let me have your email, I'll set up the invoice, set up the contract, you know, you break things down, you work like a professional, you deliver, you talk like that, oh, this is how much I'm charging you, this is what I'm charging you, this is the breakdown, oh, can we negotiate, uh, okay, maybe, uh, maybe. You know, these prices were not random, but I can give you a 5% discount. Um, you know, like, if you do certain things right, there's no limit to how much you can grow and eventually charge. So, if it's about my money, no. No, trust me, it made us more broke <laughs> at the beginning. It made us suffer more. Wow. Eventually, it paid off, but ah, it's the long game, oh. Wow. So, no, you don't have to. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. you so much. People, are, but I, I wish I could just take a screenshot of they comment and they get people for you. I don't, I'm not going to. I like to see if I do that. <laughs> you know, I know if I do that, it's for you. Yeah, yeah, to me. I'm going to blast these people with so many things that you don't know, but don't let us do that. Now, the second question is this, Victor. Um, you know, people think, but I've seen, I've seen designers say this a lot. They always say, I've seen them comment that uh, people like a uh, big boy. You know, they get clients, they do fast. Clients are always going after them. And I wish I know how I can shout this so they can hear me. All right. But I don't want to say it. I want to hear from somebody like you. You understand? So I'll be good at the All right. Now, I know there are times when you know, jobs will be like, you won't get jobs. It's very tough to think when you put away this. Um, Sorry, I'm struggling. To, I'm struggling to hear you. I, I don't know why. Can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I think I can hear you. Is it better now? Yes, better now. Yes. Better All right. Now. So yeah. So I'm saying that 
you know, uh, I know designers feel okay. There's a particular level that you will get to that you will not, but you won't lack client. You understand? And I wish that there's a way I can get a megaphone and start shouting it that oh, that's how it is. So my question is, I know there are times when you have your client and you know you have a deal. What do you do when the good project is working on it? When they do the good call for clients? What are those things you do that makes you, you know, still stand and feel well and know something is still happening? What do you do? Nice. Thank you. Thank you. So first, you are right. Um, and let me see. You have, I mean, you said you is is good if I even hear it from me mm -hmm. now. It is true. Um, at different levels, if at every level, there are times when you have clients. You know why? As you are growing, you are increasing your prices. Which means that the size of clients who can afford you in the first place, they are shrinking, shrinking, right? By the time, there's always enough people who can pay you, but there's also how many know you, how many do you have access to? So by the time, there will be times like that. In 2019, the last quarter of 2019, we couldn't afford to pay salaries for three months. I'm already a big name. We're already a big name in Nigeria in 2019, right? Um, so it happens. You stay through that post period, you stay patient, and you maximize the period of no client work to work on yourself. What did we do in those periods? We read more things, we watched more videos, we worked on our websites, improved maybe case studies that have not yet done. You know, sometimes as designers, to have fine time to do your case study last song is work because you are busy. Yeah. yeah. To finish up those things. Yesterday, if you have opinions that you want to share, you think you can write articles, write one or two articles. If you want to do a company profile or portfolio updates, that's the time to do it. If you want to get a photo shoot or something to you know improve your profile online, that's the time to do it. Um, but then you have to stay patient. You also have to find food on your table, find alternative ways. Hopefully, you have been saving. So you have to be saving when you are making money. When things are going well. You need to be saving as well. So that you at the basic level, you have a house over your head, or you live with your parents, or you have food, right? But in those periods, you can't feel depressed or feel like, ah, there's a problem. No, no, no. It's, 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 take it as a gift from God, as a break from client work. Wow. Use it to read. There have been books that you have not finished for over two years because you're doing client work. Well, pick the book and read it. Look, check online for events. Attend events. Meet people. I'm a this, I'm a designer open to opportunities, you know. So just maximize it. Use it to do the things that we then contribute to bringing the clients. Oh, one more thing. Carry everybody you have worked with before. Carry your phone. Check on them. Hello, Mr. This. How is your business going? Uh, the deck I designed for you, it's doing well. Oh, how's the brochure? Oh, how's the logo? Has anybody given you feedback about the logo? You know, to do, do. how is it doing? How, how, how have you used things in your further designs? You know, Maybe you design a website for someone, call them. How are your visitors doing? Is this business growing? You know, is there, what would you, um, you know, just check on them. At the end, say, uh, 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 please don't forget to refer me to other opportunities. So is there, does anybody come to your mind um, that you might want to refer my services to? They may say no, but now at least they're conscious of you. They may say yes. Oh, they could be like, ah, oh, well, I appreciate it if you can write me an email. You know, Check on people you have collaborated with before. Check on your mentors. You know, it's not every time coming to people's DMs and ask for, sometimes just check them. Oh, uh, this God does I hope you've had a restful week. Just start to check on you. If you have an article for me that I can read, I don't mind you can share. If you have work that I can assist you to do for free, like if you have maybe some research or something you are working on that you want me to attempt some sketch on, Please do not hesitate. Like put yourself to good productive use. Mm. And no matter what the level, no matter what the level, you will have down times. You is fine. It's fine. Make it um someone said there's dead time, there's a lifetime. Make it a lifetime. You know, if you're worried, feeling bad, please, that's dead time. When we get up in the morning and say, no client to work over, what are the what are the investments I can make in my future today? Uh, you know, so those would be my responses. 
yeah wow thank you victor thank you so much for that all right so lastly all right lastly please this one is very important because uh uh you know so it takes a good press to what uh i just want i want to ask now you know take something a good person to make the movie make of what i'm about to ask now now victor i've heard of uh full cap and you know i went to the websites i read uh, i you know i took my time to go to the website i noticed that you had the website had uh you know so many things that i believe is going to benefit big creatives all right so can you just please tell us about full gap and how why you think is good for us okay nice i think a good place to start is to give you some background story okay. which is why we're here to be honest All when right. i started out i was like i said earlier for those who joined earlier i struggled with delivering work see in futa back then some clients would come to my hostel they would come and sleep they would, like fellow students who were doing projects who had hired me they would sit down with me overnight to ensure that i finished their work because i've been promising them tomorrow tomorrow you know, and they did not see their work. And the event is almost here. They will come and sit down, literally sit down by my bunk like this while I'm designing. Because the truth is, I was terrible with timelines. I was terrible with meeting times. I did not structure things. I just wanted to work. So things like invoices or agreements or me breaking down. Somebody will ask me work. I will say I can do it in three days. Do you know why I said I can do it in three days? Because I did not take time to say, well, how much would it take me to sketch? How long would it take me to do this? How long will it take me to do that? I didn't think. I just started work. So, and that's the truth of many of us. We are good with the work, but we are bad with the structure and all of those things. But when I met Bolaji, like I said, Bolaji was like the military guy who is a structured guy. He, his strength was my weaknesses, right? And my readers of strength were not his strength in that sense. He was not a designer and all of that. All he had was a structure. So we combined together. And that's how we fired Fort Canvas in the first place. Now, what we are then doing with Full Gap is almost like automating what Bolaji came to do for me. Because it's not everybody will find their own, right? Which is to make it simpler for anybody like my 2013 self, right, to be structured, right? How can you have contracts without having to hire a lawyer? How can you have invoices without having to create it every time and then and without having to follow up on your different parts of the payments? How can you have things broken down without necessarily like having to you know create a jotter, write a table, or be writing it by yourself inside email? How can we have all of these things in one place? So when you have a new client, you've agreed a figure with them, you've agreed time, you can open your phone. How can you have a problem that you can just open, enter the name of the project, describe it. Right there, think about the different deliverables. Pick each deliverable, write the subtasks. Okay, I will sketch due by Wednesday. Okay, I will develop first option due by the following Wednesday. I'll develop this. You know, thinking through and then clicking next and having an invoice that has been generated based on all the information you get. And the invoice is able to break it down. Do you want this payment? Do you want the deposit? You know, clicking next, scene and agreement. And then when you click create projects, your client gets an email. And the email says, oh, here's the invoice, here's the contract, here's your first payment, here's how you can pay. How can we have a tool that does admin work for you without you having to be interested in the admin of things? That is what gave back to Fuga. And if you remember earlier, when I was talking about attracting clients, I said, do good work. First one, go do your Then number two, I said, Deliver efficiently, be efficient. That's where full gap comes from. Help you to be more efficient. Yeah. So it's fullgap.co, fullgap.co. And that's that's been what I've been talking about because it's part of my story. Full gap is a product of my story. It's something I struggled with, figured out, and then I saw that the need is still right there. And that's what gave back to it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. All right. Then um so uh uh victor please before you go uh eh, people are really uh people like what they heard from you in fact some people are saying here that they want to really connect with you all right uh please can you tell us the uh, different ways that we can reach you maybe on social media or on whatsapp 
Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll share now. Um, I just wanted to confirm before that, um, Mr. Tunji, in terms of your experience with the community, would you say we are doing better with designers have a reputation around um, timelines, picking up phone calls? Are you seeing some progress on that line in, in our reliability in this profession? Sorry, come again. Are you saying, are you you're asking me? Yes, I'm asking you if what's your take on the the reliability, like the structural part of the graphic designers being dependable and delivering to time. Are you seeing a growth in that gradually? I'm just curious, considering um, well, your experience with the community. Sorry, I can only speak for myself. <laughs> All right, yeah, I can only speak for myself. Well, for me, I think yes. All right, yeah, yeah, I'll think. Nice. Yeah, because I see that it's a struggle for most people. It's a struggle for most people. We, we enjoy the work, um, but many of us really, it's like the right brain, left brain side of things. Yeah. So, but yes. yeah, let's, um, to, to connect with me, um, there's only one place, one major place. It's Twitter. 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 <laughs> That's where I am, four or five hours a day. Victor Fatomi, just my name. That's all. Victor Fatomi. I'm sure my name is somewhere so on this uh, name, view. Yes. This if you type Victor Fatomi, all right. Uh, yes. You're going to see his uh, Twitter. You're going to see his name on Twitter. I okay, let me put it here for you guys. Go to the description section of uh, this video. You're going to see his guys. Twitter handle also there. You can um, yes. get in touch with him. It's that's a great person. That's it's something. It's that's somebody all. I know you're going to enjoy. You never stop tweeting. Never stop. I started following him on Twitter. My phone always. Uh, I have to keep it up. Victor is always Twitter. So yeah, I'm going to follow, you can follow him. And I'm sure you never get tired of uh, any post. Okay, so Victor, thank you again for your time. I've enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for asking me these questions. Thank you. I, I wish I listened to more things like this in the earlier in days. Fact, I I never see this coming. Actually, what I thought was going to happen before was, you know, you're going to come here, tell us about you, tell us how you started, and then how you were able to get to where you are. But I think those that to get to this point where I uh, will also pick, you know, more than what I thought I was going to pick from you. And there are some things that I do that I think I'm not really doing well that you mentioned here that you know gave me that confirmation that God is actually talking to me that my son until you don't stop and so I, I I appreciate you so much. See this is not the only time we're going to so I'm still going to call you back again because I know that you still have so many powerful things that you went by the time you launch it people will say man so I'm still going to call you back again so get ready all right no, I know the funniest thing the funniest thing I think mean, this is the third time i'm doing this meeting you are the first i'm not really good at calling people to come and speak at my meeting all right and why it's because i'm not a fan of i don't like this inspirational thing like you know the way of this inspirational people do that they will tell you that you can make 15 million naira in just one minute no i'm not a fan of it <laughs> right so that's why i have always you know running away from inviting people but when I, I took my time, there are some research I did on this that I got it. After I did all this, research, I said, hey, I want this, I want this person. You know, and uh, I appreciate you so much. So thank you. Thank you. But uh, I pray that the wisdom that you get to where you are now, you will add more wisdom that you become somebody that the world will celebrate. Jesus, amen. All right. So thank you all, thank and uh, we need to go now, guys. We need to go. So um, yeah. Bye bye. Bye. All right. So guys, bye. I hope you all enjoyed uh the the live uh, meeting, and um, uh, if you want to see more of stuff like this, please do good by uh, do yourself good by uh following Victor on his uh, Twitter page. Good address. Wanting to fit this um tweet whenever you call it David. For the reply, and um, yeah, I hope you had fun. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. 
And uh, if you have not subscribed and you're watching me right now, please remember to hit the subscribe button. Thank you all once again for your time. And I'll see you guys next year again when we have our next uh, designer's adventure. Bye.